Okay, guys, so hopefully tonight uh, you are already submitted your thesis with three facts that would help support that thesis. Um, and today uh, I've already posted on to your OneNote uh, about writing a essay for a test. I've put into your OneNote um, um, a really good article on how you best should write in introduction. We'll go over some of that when we meet on Monday. Remember, we're all Zooming on Monday at 3 o'clock. Uh, we'll be there Zooming from 3 to 3.30, so I'm hoping to see um, as many as a, of you as I can, uh, and we'll be able to at least have one uh, day each week, depending on how many weeks we have to go, uh, to be able to uh, get a little bit closer, ask questions, uh, and things like that. Um, if you haven't taken the test yet, where are you? <laughs> uh, we should have had that done, got that done last night. If you haven't taken it yet, make sure you figure it out and call me, talk to me, do something. That is 100 points. Uh, that will be a big part of your grade here uh, for a few weeks here. Well, maybe a week or so. Uh, so please make sure you guys, uh, if you haven't taken the test, you do that. Uh, by the way, the test is looking good so far out of 12 people. Uh, only one has a C and the other 10 have either B's or A's. Um, there's about five A's and six B's right now. So pretty good for a test that we've never done before and you guys did a good job on it. Um, so today, uh, I just want to spend some time uh, talking about what we started uh, a day ago, I believe, and that is the First World War. And we've talked about the causes of it. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have uh, done that also in world history class. So I'm not too worried about that. If you've missed a blank, maybe talk to a friend. And if the friend still doesn't have that blank, make sure they uh, have someone e emails me and I'll take care uh, to make sure I cover that. Uh, but tonight, uh, we're going to look a little bit more deeply at the war. Um, we have uh, some conversation about a couple maps here and uh, at least one example of trenches. Uh, so we'll definitely talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, let me pray for you guys and then we'll get going. Dear Lord, thank you uh, for this day. Uh, even though it's uh, very late for me and uh, what I had planned to do and all the craziness that's happened today already. I pray, Lord, you just have your hand in everything, especially technology. Uh, since we so depend on technology, I pray, Lord, that you just uh, be with everyone, especially those that are struggling. And I pray, Lord, that if anyone's sick, that, Lord, you just heal them right now. I pray specifically for Nolan uh, and that, Lord, you just continue to heal Nolan and help him to feel better. I pray, Lord, now for this time that we have in Christ's name. Amen. Alrighty, guys, here we go. So um, there are now some different things going on here pretty quickly in the war. Um, the two sides now get new names. Uh, so the side that is with the Germans now are called the Central Powers. And so the Central Powers obviously are in the middle, right? And so we have, uh, we have in the middle Germany and Austria-Hungary, I'm just gonna abbreviate that, Austria-Hungary, and we now add a new one, Turkey. The other group is referred to as the Allies, the Friends, and the Allies are going to include France, Great Britain, um, Italy now has uh, is gonna take and switch sides, and, um, and Japan, eventually, and someone we have left out, oh, U.S. and, uh, I'm sorry, Russia. So the sides have changed names. The two sides have changed names. The two sides have changed names. That's letter D. Um, letter E, uh, the Germans start across Belgium. And so um, if you can see on this map here, thank you, um, as you can see on this map, the Germans are going to cut across uh, Belgium. And remember, because they do that, they're going to get themselves uh, in trouble with the Brits, and the Brits are going to join the war. And this is what the BEF stands for. This is the British Expeditionary Force. Uh, as you can see from this attack, um, if they hadn't gone through Belgium, uh, there would have been no one out there on that edge. Um, but by the way, if you'll notice, most 
of most of these French units are all down here in the south because that's where they felt that Germany would attack, right straight across their border. Not many of them had anticipated, that being France, had anticipated that the Germans would actually go through Belgium and even up here into uh, uh, from um, mm, the Netherlands as well. Um, so, yeah, so the northern France, uh, letter E, the Germans uh, uh, storm across Belgium and northern France. Um, the Germans are slowed by Belgian forts, by Belgium's uh, forts, and a small, like I pointed out, British expeditionary force. Uh, the British marksmanship, the British marksmanship takes a huge toll on the Germans. Uh, one of the things that was not talked a lot about, um, at least uh, in, in maybe other past classes of yours, is that the British had fought a small group of people called the Boer down in South Africa. And the Boer had actually done a really good job of defeating the Brits. And one of the big problems the British had had is they had poor marksmanship. They couldn't shoot worth a darn. And the Boers, uh, mostly these people that were Dutch uh, that had moved into South Africa, they were pretty tough because they were such good marksmen. Um, so marksmanship is what the Germans are going to bring. Or the, Brit the British are going to bring, not the Germans. Uh, the Germans reach the Marne River and can hear the church bells of the church bells, the church bells of Paris. And if you can look right here, here is, whoa, where did Paris go? I just lost Paris. Uh, where is Paris, 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 Paris. I can't see Paris. Um, Paris. Um, oh goodness, can't see Paris. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Thank you, videographer Paris. So, so, um, thank you to the person videographing today. Uh, so the Germans are going to mush, mush and push, uh, all the forces all the way down here, the French and the British forces all the way to Paris. Um, and, uh, and uh, so they're going to literally be only 30 miles away. Uh, the French and British dig in, the British and French dig in, and eventually will take an offensive to move the Germans back into central France, somewhere around here, oops, somewhere around this area of central France. Um, in the meantime, the Russians are pushing forward and drive um, the Russian... Uh, yeah, the Russian army pushes forward and drives back the Austrian-Hungarians. Uh, the Germans are compelled now to send troops east and further slow the battle in the west. So here's what happens. So if you look at this map here, this was the original... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, this was the original starting point of the frontier where the Austrians had pushed way out to here before they had gotten pushed back all the way, and you can see here, almost to the eastern part of Germany. I have a bigger map down here that kind of shows you how far they pushed the Austrians and also the Germans who had come over to the east uh, to fight. Um, the uh, Russians... Uh, had pushed as far as this distance. Um, what's going to end up happening, though, is eventually the Austrians and, and Germans are going to push the Russians back to here and then eventually push them all the way out to here before the Russians will uh, leave the war. Uh, so this was very scary for Germany because now their two-front war has become very real. Later in 1914, Italy changes sides. Later in 1914, Italy changes sides and Turkey joins the Germans. 
So the Germans lose the Italians and get or gain the Turks. So later in 1914, Italy changes sides and Turkey joins the Germans. Um, by 1915, both sides have dug a series, oops, yeah, a, I'm sorry, and dug a series of trenches. Uh, they've dug a series of trenches and uh, we can start looking at these and we'll look more at some more pictures of these trenches. But right here, you can kind of see a pretty elaborate trench. Uh, these first trenches aren't as good as this. This would have been more like late 1915, 1916. Uh, and if you saw the, the movie 1917, uh, you would definitely be seeing these kind of trenches. By the way, also you can see in this diagram uh, some of the first gas masks, which kind of look like surgical masks almost up at the front, almost like a hood in the case of the uh, Russians and uh, uh, the Turks, and then eventually the gas mask that some of you guys are familiar with. By the way, too, we have some pictures and images. These are British uh, soldiers. Uh, these are both French soldiers, and this is the German soldier with a little peak at the top called an imperial helmet. Uh, quite an interesting little thing. Really bad in trenches because um, if you are inside of a trench as a German soldier and you start peeking up over the trench, you see that little top that's coming up and over and it would give French and British snipers the idea that, oops, now we got to shoot at this guy as he sticks his head up. Um, so by 1915, both sides have dug a series of trenches and it stretches for 400 miles. Uh, a quarter to a half mile divides the two sides. It divides the two sides. And this area is called no man's land. This area is called no man's land. So in essence, then, when we look at this, we have you know, say the French side over here. And then over here is the German trenches. And then right in the middle here, this is called no man's land. And it's a, it's, oops, no, not now. Oh my. No man's land for a reason. Uh, this area is swept back and forth by machine gun fire. It's also hit with huge shell explosions. Um, it is, it is full of barbed wire fence that is put up in front of each of the lines to impede the movement of uh, French and German soldiers, as well as British soldiers. Uh, this is not a pleasant place to be. Um, the, trenches, um, the trenches start out as shallow ditches, but gr uh, grow into very elaborate trench systems. Uh, the trenches are, uh, are each trench, I'm sorry, each trench is dug in a zigzag type of pattern. Originally, they were dug straight on, up and down, but the problem was if your enemy was able to sneak around and come off the side, then you were literally a dead duck as they just shot right down the side of the trench. So instead, they start making these trenches zigzag so you have a strong point here, strong point here, strong point here. But the idea is if the enemy gets into this trench, the other trench, the rest of the trench can still be preserved and kept safe. So they start digging this in zigzag patterns, zigzag patterns, um, in zigzag patterns um, to protect the occupants from flanking fire. Uh, the trenches are unbearable. Uh, they are filled with rats that are really big, lice, they're full of water, and unfortunately, a lot of dead bodies that can't be moved until the, uh, the uh, gunfire stops long enough to move the bodies. Uh, new weapons are gonna be used. Uh, we're going to have, for instance, machine guns that can fire up to 400 rounds per minute. And we're also going to get these new things, mostly British, tanks, flamethrowers, poisonous gas, and lastly, airplanes in 1917. 
All these things are going to make life very miserable for the soldiers during the First World War. Okay, so covered some ground there. Hopefully everything made sense. Thank you, person working on the video. Uh, that's been really helpful, getting up nice and close so they can see stuff. Um, so just a quick reminder, if you haven't sent in your thesis yet, you need to. Uh, and hopefully you guys all have taken the test and you've sent those in to me. Um, I'll try to finish up those tests between tonight uh, and sometime during uh, Saturday. Uh, I'll post those onto OneNote or onto Plus Portals and you'll see those soon. So have a great uh, night or morning if you see this in the morning. Have a great day, guys. See ya. Bye.